We're live. How is everyone today? Let me go ahead and invite Rachel. There we go. And when you get here, make sure you let me know where you're from, where you're watching from. Hey, Kat. Happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> I'm going to be talking with Rachel today about, um, hey, Christina. How are you? While we wait for Rachel, you guys need to tell me what you're doing for Valentine's Day today. Hey, Brandon. Hey, Rachel, I went ahead and sent you an invite. You can also request to join. Either way will work. Hey, Brittany. Uh, uh, you guys are all coming out. It's Valentine's Day and everything. <laughs> I appreciate you guys. Oh, oh, he brought you purple roses. Purple, for everyone that doesn't know, purple is Christina's favorite color, and that's awesome. Here we go. All right, here's Rachel. Let's see if it connects for me. I said accept. Gotta love, gotta love technology. <clears throat> Let's see. Oh, I have the invite. I hit accept. Go live. Go live. Oh, I love that he bought you purple flowers. That's awesome. Hey, Mauricio. I'm hitting accept and it's not connecting us. <clears throat> I'm going to cancel it and then I'm going to try again. <laughs> go live, go. We're trying, Rachel. <laughs> Happy Valentine's Day, Mauricio. Yay, there we go. Hey. It worked. Hooray. <laughs> How are you today? I am good this morning. <laughs> I still yeah, technology. Me. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah, I forget you're an hour. I think behind me, right? Your central yes, time. Central time. So it's eleven yeah. a.m. Yeah, so it's noon here. Uh, um, but yeah, so I'm glad it worked because I was like, sometimes it's always in the beginning, like just the connection that's happened to me before. So. Um, okay, so for everyone that's joining us, my name is Patricia. I'm the founder of Crafter. And today I'm meeting with Rachel, and she has her own art community uh, for theater. So we're going to talk today a little bit about that and also about uh, networking beyond your niche is going to be our topic today. So, hey, Jackie, thanks for coming. Um, so if you'd like, Rachel, introduce yourself about your community, and then we'll kind of get into everything. Hi. hi. Yeah, hi, everyone. Uh, thanks for having me on. Um, I, my name is Rachel. I live in between Chicago and Milwaukee. So I mm -hmm. am a theater professional in both those markets. And I've been working backstage for seven years now. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm a union member. I, I have worked at a lot of different theaters, mostly over hire, because that's my, my preferred, uh, I like to I like to kind of get a sense of the community and like meet new people and go to new jobs on a, on a regular basis. Okay. Um, and uh, over the course of the pandemic, when the theaters were all shut down, mm -hmm. I realized that the only place to really network if you work backstage is at work. And so it's a very referral based industry, which before right. COVID worked, you know, it worked the way it worked and if you wanted right. to get in then you would find someone and you would you know follow follow them wherever they were going and we would right. help each other out but the industry has gotten a lot more scattered since covid and a lot of people mm -hmm. left and there there are many different communities popping up right now that are trying to address this issue and mine is mm -hmm. simply one one of them in the many um right. different melting right. pots and so we are after uh giving theater professionals the tools that you need in order to have a long-term sustainable successful career in the industry on your own terms without sacrificing your health well-being um and 
personal family life, et cetera. Right. And you had mentioned, we had talked before this about how when COVID hit a lot of actors and in people that work backstage were forced to find other work because all the theaters were closed and they were like, okay, I got to readjust. And then now that everything's kind of not back to normal, but you know, like almost, you know, to the point where, okay, we're open, things are happening again. It's like, they have that to weigh that pro and con of, do I leave the job that I left to get through COVID and have pay the bills or do I go back? You know, so that's also an interesting yeah. factor as well. Yeah. It's <clears throat> been very, very interesting because I, I think a lot of us are redefining what we consider to be success mm -hmm. and what we consider to be a successful career. And so I know a lot of people who were completely full time before yeah. COVID as freelancers and backstage mm -hmm. workers who now have gone to be on, gone on to be like an artist with a day job, which is sort of an anti what we were always taught as to be successful because we would always we were working towards okay when i work in theater full time 40 yeah. hours a week for one company that is like success and now we're all kind of taking a step back and being like what is that actually <laughs> yeah no that's a really good point because it's interesting how certain career paths full time is like, yeah, because you work for another company or whatever. But when you work for yourself or your own your own business, or you have different different avenues of revenue or, or income coming in, then it's one of those things where you kind of do have different. It's different. It's not it is, doesn't look the same as going to a nine to five and then coming home that you have to think about, okay, well, what do I really want? What does success mean to me? You know, how do I make sure that I'm happy and stable and like have all the things that I need, but it might not mean being with one place and like you might jump around or you might stay it just depends on kind of your goals and what you want yeah absolutely yeah. and at uh stage creative network i sorry my dog is <laughs> wanting to get up um <laughs> okay he can stay. <laughs> we, i really make it a point to say that you know no matter what you choose or what career mm -hmm. path you choose you are still a professional oh, yeah. and so if you choose to you know, work as a business analyst, but on the weekends you work for your uh, local union, you are still a professional mm -hmm. and you don't have to, you can, you can set goals and like strive to, to do whatever calls you. Mm -hmm. But um, I really want to stress that part-time workers especially now are still professional and they still deserve the same level of space, time and attention oh, yeah. uh, as full-time, full-time workers. Yeah. And a lot of us, you know, over the course of the pandemic have had shifting, changing priorities too. Mm -hmm. And working right. backstage is not an easy job. <laughs> no, no, it's not. Yeah. And, and so for everyone joining us today, I know I had mentioned a, a few times, you know, oh, okay, we're going to talk about, you know, networking outside of your niche. And for everyone that doesn't do a lot of the, the lingo and speak, niche is simply focusing on one area of your business, right? So if you, like, for example, for artists, sometimes people have a niche and their niche is they paint beach landscapes and that is their thing. And they zero, they laser focus in a lot of times they will teach you in business that it's very important to have a niche because quite honestly, it's e I feel like it's a little bit easier to market if you have a very specific thing that you're marketing because then your audience, you can really talk about, okay, who is my audience? How, what are their hobbies? What's their demographic? Where do they hang out? What matters to them? And so usually people will say, in order to be successful, you have to have a niche, yes. right? I agree with that to an extent. I think that sometimes when people have a specific niche and they're like, that's, I'm going all in on just this one thing, they could potentially still have opportunities, not, not necessarily in terms of style. Like it doesn't mean you necessarily have to change your style or anything like that, but there might be something that you hadn't considered outside of that realm where you could connect and network with those people and they could go, Hey, you know, could you do this for me? And you go, Oh wow. I hadn't thought of that. So really we're just going to talk a little bit about like, how to do that and maybe ideas of how to do that and things. So did yeah, you... I, I am all for networking outside of your niche. Mm -hmm. um, I think I do want to speak though on a little bit of, so I think that 
when we choose to network with the people that do the same thing as us, um, mm -hmm. it's because we feel safe, right? Yeah. So a lot of yeah. us are coming from um, this sort of unprocessed trauma mm. of people not taking us seriously mm. for a very, very, very long time. So for example, you know, you'll be with family members and they're like, mm. oh, how's the, how's the art thing going? Yeah. Or how's, how's the theater thing going? How's your little right? business how's, doing? How's, how's that, how's that <laughs> yeah. going for you? Yeah. And so it, we can, it is very easy and safe to get into a mindset uh, because of that to say, mm. Uh, you know what, I'm just going to network with people who get it and who yes. who understand what it is that I am going through and like understand what we're all about. And I think that sometimes we do need that season <laughs> for networking yeah, because yeah. we can get burned out. And I'm like, you know what, it's the, it's the middle of winter. I'm already depressed. So I'm just going to talk to theater people. <laughs> well, um, yeah, yeah, I yeah. understand. But I do, but I do think that when, once we overcome that and we can be confident in speaking yeah. to our skills and our abilities and saying, Hey, I am a professional. Um, yeah. This is what I do. Um, right. Then, then when you network with people who maybe don't understand what it is that you do, you become that person. And yeah. I think we talked about that a little bit before in our right. last session or our last get together where when you even if someone doesn't understand exactly what it is that you do if they hear the word theater then they might say oh you know what i know someone else who might uh, whom you might want to connect with yeah. and they kind of like gear you towards that and so yeah. that can also be very helpful to be if because chances are they don't know a lot of people yeah that yeah. work in the arts or work as a painter or as a theater professional or because we network within our niches. <laughs> yeah, you know, oh. and, and you limit it to yeah. that. And, and to build off what you said, I have a perfect example. Um, it's, it's a little bit uh, to the side, but it, so when my daughter was born, she's hard of hearing. So she has, has unilateral hearing loss in her left ear. And I had no idea to do, so I didn't know anybody in the deaf community, nothing. All I simply did, because unfortunately, without going on a side tangent, unfortunately, the medical uh, community does not embrace learning sign language or, like, it, it, was a, it was an uphill battle for us. So I reached out literally on Facebook and simply put, does anyone know anyone in the deaf community they could connect me with? Because I don't know anything about that. Yeah. And I had a few people reach out and go, oh, I know somebody. Let me just set you up with them, right? Like, cool. I've been friends with them for years now because I simply just asked people and said, hey, does anyone know anyone that, that could help or direct me? Um, also, to build on what you said earlier, you have this season in the beginning of, like you said, very specifically that people, when people don't take you serious, right? You need that season of kind of building your confidence. Once you build that confidence, you can go to someone who may have no idea what you do and explain it in a clear way. Like usually they call it elevator pitch, but you can explain it in such like a clear way that you've had that confidence, you've had that experience, and you can say, look, I can explain this to you. I can show you. I can help you. You just got to talk to me and use layman terms, you know, things like that. So it's super easy, right? Um, so I think it's good to have your, it's good to have your tight community. It's good to have your niche. It's good to have that. But then once you have that, that confidence and you realize, yeah, I'm a professional, I can do this. You can expand outside of that and it'll help, help a lot. Yeah, absolutely. And I, um, I think that it expands your expectations too. Mm -hmm. And you never know who you're going to meet. I have, um, you know, I've met, I've gone to, uh, like get togethers and conventions mm -hmm. for entrepreneurs. And I've met people who mm -hmm. don't work in theater, but they're on like the boards oh. of theater. Oh. And I'm like, yeah, okay. <laughs> and what a board. <laughs> you're someone I need to know. And yeah. I would have met you if I hadn't, uh, if I hadn't decided to, you know, introduce myself in this other circle. Yes. 
So and it can be yeah. it can be a challenge a lot because when when artists are struggling with like their confidence or they're they're in that beginning stage where they feel like people don't take them serious, like it's hard for some people that are more introverted to take up that space and say, hi, nice to meet you. I'm so-and-so. And it's not always about selling. <laughs> like it doesn't have to always be a selling thing. It can just simply be, hi, I'm a person, you're a person. Let's be friends. Let's talk. And you never know if, if later down the line, someone will email you or reach out and say, Hey, do you think you could help my friend? Or do you think that you could help? It's just being a good person and helping each other <laughs> and, and, you know, along the way and, and, and things like that. So this isn't necessarily networking specifically to, to sell to yeah. someone. It's just to meet people and put your name out there so that you're, you're memorable and people go, Oh yeah, you know, they helped me with this. They could also help you with this kind of situation. Yeah. I think that I agree with that. I think that, um, a lot networking events are not the only place to, places to network. Mm -hmm. um, I think that just being able to practice our hobbies is a great way to network because mm -hmm. we can make friends mm -hmm. um, in those, those circles yeah. and then uh, slowly build up a friendship relationship that mm -hmm. then, um, you know, friends talk about their jobs. And yes. I have always said, you know, part of having a work life balance is having great hobbies. And because if you don't have hobbies, then you have nothing to talk about when you do network. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it can be bad. Like for me, I, I don't do a whole lot of a whole lot of hobbies. But I'm not I'm that person that talks about my kids. <laughs> I'm, I'm that mom. <laughs> so yeah, but I understand what you're, I understand what you're saying. It's, yeah. it's definitely you want to be able to talk about things outside of your work because otherwise it's just a repeat, like your broken record. So yeah, I understand what you mean. Yeah. I, you know, even when I am at work, I don't only want to talk with everyone. Uh, like if we all just talked about theater all the time, it would yeah. get like insane. <laughs> you, you get burned out real quick. Yeah, <laughs> I wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> so some other some other ways I've seen people network, which I love. Um, one of my members, Tia, she actually started her own membership as well uh, called Aligned Exhibits. And she threw her own event. Now, when you tell people throw your own event, usually people are like, Ugh! Like that's, that's a lot of work. All they think about is all the work, right? Now when I say event, it does not mean it has to be this huge thing, like a, a huge convention. You can do local events and things like that. And just like meetups, isn't there a, what's that app called? Isn't there a meetup app or yeah. something yeah. along those lines? Yep. Again, yeah. it's similar hobbies, things like that. Say, Hey, we're doing a meetup, find a local area that you can get together with people and say, whoever can make it great. And then you meet with people that may have either similar interests or it can be more gen general and outside of your niche if you want to go that direction as well. And just making friends, like you said, with either your hobbies or whatever else is going on. And so that's a good way um, to kind of network and, and, and take charge of it because then you know exactly when, where, how. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a good way to do it. Yeah. That's a, yeah, that's a, that's great advice. I used to go to, when I, I was a commercial makeup artist before mm -hmm. I went back into theater. Cause I used to do theater when I was younger. Um, mm -hmm. But I, I would go to two uh, makeup artist meetups and um, workshops and all of these different things to meet to, that were hosting events because I'm like, okay, yeah, if you're going to host an event, I'm going to go. Yeah. Um, I think that it's a little tricky now because of COVID, but yeah. uh, if, you know, if you want to, if you want to go that route, like you can also do, you can have a virtual event. You can do yeah. what we're doing, like going live. Yeah. Um, there are so many ways to meet people now and uh to start your own your own community i one of my goals eventually with stage creatives network is to have um an in-person event um but somewhere somewhere down the line yeah we're not quite there yet <laughs> well for 
For me, all my members are all over the United States, so that will definitely be a goal for me as well, but a little bit difficult to have it in person, yes. <laughs> have everyone come, you know, here or me go somewhere else. So uh, that, that would be really amazing um, to do that. Um, another, another idea for trying to look outside of your niche is if you volunteer. Mm -hmm. um, so a lot of times I've seen people volunteer for something that they really feel strongly and passionately about, and they just get to know the people that are in that network. And so you go outside and it might not be specifically to the artwork you do. Cause like for artists, common things for networking or what galleries, craft fairs, things like that, where they're okay, I'm going to meet other artists there. I'm going to meet people that care about art. You know what I mean? I get to learn more about them. But if you're trying to look outside of that and make a, a new networking circle, try to look outside of what your hobbies are, what your interests are, or maybe something that you just genuinely really care about. Some maybe a, uh, something you donate to a project. Um, I had reached out at one point, uh, reached out to a charity and talked to them, you know, how can I help? Maybe, you know, is there something that I can do for that charity that it still involves what I do, but is donating or helping that other cause to help with that as well. So there's, there's just different things you can try to do for that. I don't know if, for artwork or for, um, excuse me, for theater, if it's something that you guys do any kind of I don't know if you guys do volunteer. There are, yeah, there are lots of opportunities. Um, you know where to look. Um, mm -hmm. I, my issue is that I am usually just so busy. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> that I don't have a ton of time to volunteer. Um, yeah. But I love, um, one of my favorite things to do is when I can is to support uh, local like community theater and mm. um, yeah. uh, like smaller regional companies yeah. um, because I think that those are really important and they are you know nonprofits they're giving arts to their individual communities mm -hmm. as well and I think it's important to support that what, yes. whatever I can um it yeah it is hard with a production schedule <laughs> no <laughs> so, I get that that's a good thing you bring up because like you can go and you know, support another fellow artist's mm -hmm. event, right? It's not about you in that situation. You're not trying to push what you're right. selling. You know what I mean? You're not trying to sell what you're doing, but you're in the same thing with theater. You can go to someone else's show, you know, support each other. And that's so big. You know what I mean? Um, it's really big across the board. I feel like in the art community that if you get an opportunity or a customer, whoever that goes to, you're like, you know what? I can't take care of that. It's not really my thing, but you know who can help you? is this really awesome person that always supports me in my endeavors and my goals, you know what I mean? And then they, they point you in the right direction. And you know, that's, I love doing that. Like I love connecting people together. Yeah. So that's like, that's huge. And I feel like, like with you, with your membership, it's the same where you love connecting people. Like how can I get you to where you want to go? How, you know, that sort of thing. And it's, it's really great to do that. You know? Yeah. I love, love connecting people. It's, I, it's one of the reasons that I started the membership is because I realized that like, I've been doing that for years. I have, someone will reach out and they'll, and I'll say, oh, you know what? You should know this person. I do. <laughs> <laughs> My husband gets so frustrated and gets, um, because everywhere we go, I seem to know someone. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Tell your husband, knock it off. <laughs> No, I love that. No, I, I love it because it just, even if, if, like you said, if there's a common interest in something that they like, it could be as small as like a show or a, anything. And you can say, oh, you know who really loves that? I should introduce you to my friend so-and-so. And I'm the same type of person. I do the same thing. Yeah. But I've had a lot of friends tell me, thank you. I would have never met this person had you not made that introduction. And let's be honest, and I don't want to be silly about it or anything, but making friends as an adult can be hard. Oh, it is. It's very, very hard. It's not e easy. I'm, I'm pretty like, uh, I'm, I can be introverted if it's like a big party, but like, I'm pretty extroverted. So for me, like, even me, I like go and I'm like, Oh, like, how do, how do you, how do you, you know, bridge that of like, okay, let's, 
let's be buddies. Like, <laughs> like it can be, it can be awkward for people. So when you have a second person, like a friend go, you, I like you and I like you and you should be friends. And, and they have that like kind of helps with the awkwardness a bit. I feel like for me. So that's why I like to do that for others because I go, Oh, you guys should talk. You should guys, you know, so. Yeah. I think it, it, helps. It, can, it helps to have sort of a, it's like a, a reinforcer. <laughs> yeah. It's like an outside objective person saying you sh you guys need to know each other like you should connect yes um, even yeah absolutely I send people's like it doesn't matter if I've known you for like five minutes or ten years if I can if I meet someone and I'm like oh you know what you're you need to look at this person's Instagram and you need to like connect with them because you guys do the same things yeah um, yeah <laughs> And, th and that's yeah. the thing is it's, it's a big, another good one is collaborating with people. So like, I know that's pretty common that, that people will try to um, collaborate with others. It's really smart idea. That's going to be my biggest goal. in this year is to collaborate um, because I know sometimes companies that have their own community already may already have the audience that we're both looking, you know, that we're looking yeah. for. Right. <clears throat> so instead of climbing up the ladder yourself, Go to someone and say, hey, I provide these services. I could support you. may not be exactly the same, but you might have similar audiences and say, hey, if I give this to your community, can we work together? How can we work that out? And then they already have the audience. So then you're not struggling to try to get out in that you know, network and, and, and get in front of a new audience. You're, you're, what's the phrase? You either buy, borrow, or build yep. your audience, right? Yeah. So you either buy it with ads, which can be like the worst sometimes. <laughs> you can borrow it by collaborating, right? Like talking to people, or you can build it yourself organically, which works, but it takes a lot of time for people to see you over and over again and go, do I trust this person? Are they a good person? I don't know. I, they kind of have to see you a lot before they, they see, you know, okay, they're good people. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. <laughs> So I've been talking lately to a lot of um, uh, guest artists that I want to bring mm -hmm. on for programming for 2023 for Stage Creators yeah. Network. And I've been telling them, I'm like, you know, I am, by having you on the platform, I am uh, benefiting just as much uh, from, oh, yeah. you, from you bringing in your audience as you mm -hmm. are from being able to t teach uh, mm -hmm. what you have to teach. So whatever mm -hmm. I can do to support you or, you know, whatever you want to be paid, like I'm willing to work with you. Um, yeah. Because I, I understand, you know, if they, that they will bring, if they're going to teach something that they'll bring their audience to my yes. platform. And that's what I want, you know? Right. Exactly. Exactly. And so you want to make it in a way that it's, it's mutual beneficial and both of us are extremely lucky and I don't I don't mean to blow smoke because we're both very lucky to have such talented people like yeah. I see some of the stuff that my artists make for customers through my site and I'm like and, and what's funny is to be like well I don't know do you think this is good and I'm like yes <laughs> yes it is it's fantastic and I don't I'm like not, not lying not making that up like I'm serious like I'm hyped right and so it that's a lot of fun yeah. it's a lot it's been an amazing experience oh my um oh my goodness yes I feel the same way like I I sometimes feel like I live vicariously through the people that I am in that are in my network yep. because I'm like well, you for doing such amazing, cool things. And like, I love bragging about people too. Yes. <laughs> like, yes. oh God, it doesn't matter. Like if I, you know, haven't talked to them in a while or like I, you know, we've lost touch. If I see that they're like off in New York doing amazing things and I'm like, yeah. I'm like, oh yeah, I know that per person. Oh my God. They're gonna like, they're gonna light up Broadway. <laughs> oh, I love that I love that though and that's the thing is a lot of times people will be nervous about uh like they feel like they're selling themselves and that they're bragging 
right? <clears throat> like, oh, I don't want to talk about myself too much because then people will think I'm like not humble and you know, blah, blah, blah. I have no problem taking someone's artwork and being like, isn't this awesome? <laughs> so if you need me to do it, I'm, I'm, I'm perfect. <laughs> So it's, it's always good to have someone else hype you up and tell you, like, remind you how awesome you are. Yeah, for sure. I love it. Um, I'm trying to think. So, and you're based out of, I thought you were based out of Wisconsin. Did you say where you're based out of? I thought it was yeah. Wisconsin. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, so you're based out of Wisconsin, but your membership crosses over anywhere in the U.S. Is that right? Yeah. Yep. Right. We have people from all over, a lot of Chicago people, um, some, you know, uh people in like you know atlanta north carolina um kind of yeah all all over the place um i am well like a lot of our programming is going to be virtual so i'm not concerned with you know where yeah. people or um anyone can join i yeah anyone anyone can join <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I wanted to make sure I didn't misspeak because I wanted to be like, oh, yeah, she's all over the United States and be like, are you all over the United States? Uh, okay, so we, I'm trying to think of other ways that people know. What's, what's interesting, too, is I've mentioned to different artists, like, I'll see some of the work they do, and I said, you know who would really love that or that would be really great for either, like, I market for big stuff that, that's pretty common, I feel like, like holidays or events or things like that because a lot of times people want, custom stuff made for that. I talked to one of my members and she's like, oh, I never market for that kind of stuff. And I'm like, so, so for me, it's interesting um, to see the different ways that people market themselves and how they get to where they want to go. Um, one way that I've learned uh, in terms of networking that's helpful is finding groups online as well that may have a a hobby, a shared hobby, shared interests, share something that is in the same scope of what you already do. Right. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's a good way of kind of getting your name out there where people go, Oh, like there's a artist, Jennifer, she does horror artwork. So I'll go into horror fan groups or something like that. You know what I mean? And I'll be like, Oh, look, isn't this awesome? And people will connect, you know? So it's just, it's been an interesting journey of all the different ways. And so if you find, Find yourself in a situation where you're only marketing in one way. I encourage you to try many different avenues because, I mean, there's just so many. There's a lot of opportunity yeah. out there. And yeah. for people like us who has, like, these membership groups and are active about, mm -hmm. you know, knowing people, seeing what they're doing, like, bragging about our community, like, talking <laughs> to everyone, yeah. um, that it can be really helpful because in those those groups that you mentioned a lot of, a lot of them are very very not uh f in favor of self promotion yes so, you have to yeah, you read have to the rules very careful yeah. so when you are in a group like crafter or when you're in a group mm -hmm. like stage creatives network um the more that pe people within your industry see your work, the more they can post about you on your yes. path without you breaking or violating the rules because they're not, because if I was going to say, Oh, look at this cool, like theater thing that my, uh, or th show that my friend is in, um, on Facebook in one of my groups, I'm not breaking the rules mm -hmm. by saying, Oh, come see me do this. Yeah. Because yeah, so I yeah. think that that's um, something to keep in mind and what mm -hmm. benefit of sort of having your niche, but then allowing them to network beyond. Yes. <clears throat> yes. And, and it is extremely helpful when people share things and it's more of a, like it's genuine. It, it's genuine marketing. It's like, hey, look what I, I bought that is, isn't this fun? I bought this on here and it's amazing, blah, blah, blah. It's not a direct buy from me. So, you know, yeah. here's the link to buy. Um, I recommend, every, it, and it's, it's tedious, but every group, if I'm specifically talking about, about Facebook, every group has rules. And sometimes they allow you to do a sales post on certain days, or sometimes they say, don't do it at all. Or sometimes they say, you can do it, but this is the format we're looking for. So as long as you're willing to put in the time and effort, you can really go through either things within what you already do 
or to say, okay, well, what's beyond that? What might be helpful to somebody outside of that? How can I, and see if you're still able to, to post something that's technically self-promotion, but you just got to be careful. You don't want to, no one likes when you spam or you're yeah, pussy and yeah, yeah. you want it to be as organic as possible. And it helps too when you're in those groups and you're networking, um, that if you are an active member, yeah. Because yeah. the more active you are and more helpful and the more posts yeah. and comments that you make, the yeah. less spammy it becomes. Right. Because if you only post every six months saying, like, I did this thing, then, like, people are just going to see through it. Yeah, yeah. Um, so it's really kind of a lot of work. Um, but, again, I've said this. Networking is work. Like, it, 100%. It, yeah. it is work. It is crucial because you need a strong network. Um, in order to thrive in your career, mm -hmm. not just, I believe in networking, not just to get ahead, but also to take a step back, which a lot of people mm -hmm. don't think about because they think when you network and you're active in all these social circles, it's to move up in your career. But it's also when you want to take a break, because if you yeah. don't have anyone that you can call on, yeah you are you know, you. <laughs> dealing with family stuff or when you want to like take yeah. time off, then mm -hmm. it's, it's hard because if I'm not saying that that's, you know, obviously it's not your, at the end of the day, it's not your responsibility. If some, right. you have a job and you have to say no, it's not your responsibility to find mm -hmm. anyone, but in some ways you want to be the one that finds someone yeah. because if it's someone within your network then you are doing them a favor at the same yes. time they're doing your favor versus if the company has to find someone themselves then they might replace you yeah <laughs> and yeah. like no, i don't know tricky because i'm like i believe in work-life balance i don't believe in saying yes to everything and i don't believe that um, we have to be responsible for filling our own roles, but you, mm -hmm. it's just a reality. You have to keep in mind that when you're networking, it's also to be able to say, okay, I have five people that I can call if, um, if I absolutely cannot come into work. Yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. Cause then you're not only helping whoever's employing you, but you're also helping the person that might be looking for work. Yeah. And then that's a win win. And at least at least if you go to them and say, Hey, sorry, I can't, I can't make it. You can at least say, I can't make it, but here's a solution. Yep. Here's, no, I can't make it, figure it out and just, you know. Yeah. And again, like great. this, I know in theater, it's all about referrals and it's such a, mm -hmm. um, a referral based industry, which is why like having a strong network is one of the things that we promote at stage network, mm -hmm. which you can log, which is why like, when you log in and you create an account and you upload your resume, all of that base level is free. So like mm -hmm. anyone can do that um, mm -hmm. because that was already free to begin with. We're just providing right. a platform for it. Right, so right. That was my thinking is like, you know what? I could, we already have all of these social media platforms at our disposal. Yeah. Um, and so centralizing it is not the same as monetizing it. Yeah. So then re explain to me then, cause I want to make sure I follow. So are your, are your um, actors able to, or is it backstage only or actors as well? It's anyone can, it's anyone, anyone, right? I, I am specifically like targeting or um, my, like the messaging and like content that I put out is for backstage professionals. Okay. That's not what, okay. that actors are aren't welcome. It's just that actors have a million other platforms okay. that they can already use. Okay. Proposal. Got you. Okay. So, um, so then how on, on your membership, how are they able to build relationships? Do they do it on there or do they do it outside? Um, both. So they can do it on there. Um, you can friend it with the the website server we use you can friend people um you can comment you can create posts um you can upload your resume and like see other people's resumes as well and oh, cool. on there um and then the paid option is for like the premium membership which is six a six month membership will provide like the uh 
the live opportunities and the programming and the events and stuff. Oh, so, cool, cool. Yeah. Okay, okay. So I love that. Right. So you can do it both. And the way that we're doing it in 2023 is as we bring on guest artists mm -hmm. to teach workshops, it will be hybrid. Mm -hmm. um, so you don't have to be on the site if you would like to attend a a workshop you can pay for oh, right. it outright um <clears throat> right like going yeah. on the site but <laughs> because then you yeah. connect with everybody after um and a, and keep track and like uh rsvp and all of that yeah. but it's not a mandatory requirement yeah it was hybrid and then um a, a lot of the programming that i'm bringing in if you are a premium member it will just be available to you it won't be um you won't have to pay anything extra. So that's a benefit of like having a a six month membership where you get access to X, X, Y, and Z. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Yeah. Well, is there any, I know we're, we're running short on time. So do you have anything else you want to share? Anything we forgot about? I always like to ask that before I wrap things up. I, you know, I don't think so. I mean, I am not sure. Um, how many of like how many crossovers we would have between mm -hmm. crafter and uh stage creatives network but we are going to be at speaking of live events we are going to be at setc and usitt next month awesome. Um, awesome. so if, if you are in those areas if you live in st louis or um what's the the other one is in uh uh lexington God, Lexington, yeah. Kentucky. If you're in either of those areas and you would like to come say hi, chat with me, even if you're not going to the conference, like, right. like, do you, like send me a message saying I live in Louisville and I'd love to get a coffee or something, or yeah, I live in I live in St. Louis and you have to check check this out. Um, uh, like I I would love to hear from you and I'd love mm -hmm. to connect with you that way. Um, so yeah. we're gonna be at those conferences the first and third weekends of March awesome. so that should be great. If you do any great. kind of a uh, post about that oh send yeah. it to me and I'll share it I'll um I'll next probably yeah I'll next week awesome. about um or the week after yeah I'll share it because that way and everything we're gonna have like uh, a raffle like raffle prizes door prizes um there's a design and tech mixer i'll be there and um there's i will anyone who signs up uh at the conference gets a, a mm -hmm. free t-shirt <laughs> Oh, fun. That'll be fun. I love oh, it. I had debated doing shirts at one point. I'm like, I don't know. I have to think about something fun, but <laughs> yeah, I might, I could even go live and just like say and explain all the prizes that we have. Cause I'm really excited. <laughs> oh, yay. That's going to be fun. I love that kind of stuff. All right. Well, it was absolutely wonderful talking with you today. Um, and I will tag you in all of this. So for anyone that is in the theater community, I encourage you to follow Rachel. And for anyone watching this on, on Rachel's side, if you love artwork, then you should follow me. <laughs> so we'll go ahead and tag everything um, once this is posted. And I hope you all have a fantastic day. Thank you for all of you that have watched. And I hope you have a fantastic day. Yeah, thank you for having me. Happy Welcome. Valentine's Day. Happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> Hey, <laughs> bye-bye.